retro video games, such as Tetris, Mario, Galaga, Tron, Space Invaders, and Pac-Man help shape the gaming industry as we know it. But what if we took these iconic video games and made them even cooler by turning them into Lego enemies? Let's dive in and see how they come to life. To kick off this project, I decided that Tetris would be the first game to be transformed into a LEGO animation. However, I couldn't just jump in head first without a plan. I needed to determine how long a Tetris block stays in the same position. So I played a bit of Tetris while recording and dragged the footage into my editing software, and counted how many frames it was stationary for. It turns out there was 40 frames out of 60 that were stationary. Since I'm animating at 15 frames per second, I calculated that the block should move approximately every 4.5 frames. With a semi-decent plan in hand, I built the background using a variety of black floor pieces and outlined it with gray ones. I also created every block variation I needed. Now I've actually gotta, you know, animate the game. I started off pretty simple by just having basic pieces spawn in. And as I kept animating, I decided I wanted to add a bit more of a human element by including the split second when someone is changing their mind about a placement. For the blocks disappearing, I thought fire would fit the scene perfectly. Now that the animation is complete, we need to work out the music. I could listen to the original theme song and play it back on piano, drag it into an editing software, add some tracks and filters only to find out that I messed up the timing, or I could just use this epic remix. Yeah, I'm gonna just use the remix. And with that, I give you Tetris and Lego. Okay, now let's move on to Mario if you just let me. Mario is a Lego stop motion. Let's go. But not just any Mario, the original 8-bit Mario. This was gonna be a little bit of a challenge to animate. So I immediately began brainstorming. In the original Mario World game, Mario has five animation frames, which means I need to build five different Lego Marios. So I printed out the run cycle, gathered my Legos, and got to work. Thankfully, I realized I could reuse the head for each body, which saves some time. In total, it took about two hours to build all the Marios. But there's just one more problem. Mario is absolutely massive. I was gonna have to shrink him down to the right size. To do this, I would use an editing technique called compositing, which is essentially layering scenes on top of each other to create a singular scene. So I set up a green paper background to help with compositing and finally animated Mario. And when I looked at the playback, I was ecstatic with how it turned out. Yes. One layer down, four... Where to go? The next layer to animate was the ground. I built a few platforms and obstacles for Mario to jump over, and animating was as simple as sliding the pieces across the screen. I did have to pause at one point in time to add Mario collecting some coins. I also had to get some other quick shots for other objects that I needed to composite into the final scene. For the final layer, I went on to makeabricks.com and built a little Lego hill. I exported it, rendered it in Blender as a PNG, and did the same for a Lego cloud. Now all that's left to do is to smash everything together. I think it looks pretty good, but I'll let you be the judge. Enjoy. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. In contrast to our next game, Tetris and Mario were really, really easy. The next game is going to require a lot, and I mean a lot, of compositing. If you haven't guessed already, it is, of course, Pac-Man. It's a start, bro, again. Seriously? I do not have time for this. As I was saying, to kick things off, I played a few rounds of Pac-Man to get some inspiration. I knew I wanted to recreate all the characters in a 8-bit style and shrink them down for the animation. So after a bit of thinking, I spent about two hours building a Lego Pac-Man, a ghost, a vulnerable ghost, and even his transition warning. Aren't there supposed to be four ghosts in Pac-Man, though? Yes. There are, but rather than building each one from scratch, I would just create one ghost and change its color in post-production, and it would still have the effect of multiple ghosts. With all the pieces built, I dove right into animating. The tentacles was by far the hardest to animate. Why? Because I wanted them to have that classic wavy looping movement. After a long and painful animating session, it was complete. Step one of two done. Now here comes the fun part. I went on to mechabricks.com and meticulously spent two hours placing every single wall, exported it into Blender, rendered it, put it into DaVinci, masked out all the characters, looped their animations, animated Pac-Man transgressing through the map, and animated all the dots, Go and animated the ghost following him becoming scared of being eaten by Pac-Man and Pac-Man being eaten by a ghost. <laughs> okay, I think you get the point. This was an absolute pain. And this is what I have to show for 
10 hours of work. Hopefully you like it. The next game I'm animating is Tron. Now the original Tron features two distinct game modes, light cycles and tank Whoa, 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 hang on a second there, past JB is incorrect. There's actually four game modes, light cycles, grid bugs, MCP clone, and IO tower. Okay, you can continue now. With light cycles, of course, being the more iconic of the four. Naturally, I decided to focus on light cycles. I quickly got to work building the background for the light cycle mode. Now all I need is the bikes. Instead of creating large 8-bit versions of the bikes, I decided to use smaller miniatures. Next, I needed to figure out how the movement would work. So, of course, I watched some of the original gameplay and realized the bikes should move two studs per frame. That in mind, I began animating. One of my goals was to make the blue bike seem more intelligent by having it make more calculated turns. Now, the final touches are cropping the edges, stabilizing the animation, and adding sound effects. And with that, I give you Tron and Lego. Now, I'm not gonna lie, Tron was relatively easy. Fortunately, I can't say it's the same for our next game, Space Invaders. For Space Invaders, there are three separate aliens, each with two frames of animation. Evidently, the next step was to expand on this idea. I began constructing six 8-bit aliens, all ready to be animated. Along with the characters, I also built up the turret and a barrier. With the characters finally complete, I could begin animating. However, when animating, I had to take into account that the scene was also going to require compositing, so once again I had to set up a green screen, capture the necessary frames, and then moved on to my editing software. Before positioning the aliens, I watched some more gameplay of Space Invaders for reference. I discovered the aliens move in a distinctive, wave-like pattern, with each alien moving over one by one, as well as changing animation phases. To start editing, I removed the background, made sure the animation changed every second, and looped it. To create the wave-like animation, I would group them up two by two and keyframe them by moving them on the x-axis by 10 points. Great! Now I just have to do this... seven more times. Once I had finally finished all the king, I immediately got to work animating the turret firing, the aliens exploding, and the aliens firing as well. I didn't end up animating the barriers being damaged, but uh, it's still pretty good. Okay, we're finally done. This is how it turned out. Last, but absolutely not least, we have Galaga. And by this time, I'm pretty sure you are all too familiar with the drill. Okay, yeah, I admit that was a pretty corny joke. Moving on! To start, I printed a version of the Galaga ship to use as a reference point for recreating it as an 8-bit version in LEGO. Once the ship was complete, I move on to building the aliens. Now, unlike Space Invaders, the aliens change animation phases every half second, so I'd have to keep this in mind for composite. Now that that's sorted out, I got to work animating the aliens in an explosion. On to actually putting everything together. First, I would need to create the starry background. Now, I had the idea to take a digital LEGO stud, link it to a particle system, have it fall downwards, add some emission, and render it as a transparent animation. The explosion worked surprisingly well, considering I was using a black screen as a king element. Next, I animated the aliens moving, one by one, multiple times, for multiple hours. I actually forgot to build a little Lego laser piece in stop motion, so I just made one on mechabricks.com, rendered it as a transparent image in Blender, and then put it into my editing software. Now after a grueling five hours of editing, I present to you Galaga as a Lego animation. <laughs> And that's a wrap. If you somehow made it to the end of this video, I want to say a massive thank you. The only reason I'm even able to do this is all because of Jesus. If you want to know more about who Jesus is and what he did for you, I'll leave a link to a Discord server in the description, and I will happily answer any of your questions. I also want to say thanks to channel members. Joining memberships will give you early access to videos, and now- Why do you keep getting in the way every time I try to do something? Please, just go away. Thank <laughs> you.